A guy named Lou Holtz once said, it's not the load that breaks you down, but it, rather it's the way that you carry it. And that applies to what I want to talk about today. There's two different types of loading that you can use to design your strategy to build muscle or get stronger or whatever. There's what's called distributed loading and concentrated loading. Now distributed loading, the purpose is to uh, distribute your frequency, your intensity, and your volume and avoid overworking your body's capacity to recover, or rather working within your limits to recover. Concentrated loading is the opposite. What you do is you increase the frequency, the intensity, and the volume, and your purpose, your intention, is to overwork your body's capacity to recover. And the logic is that when you started working out, what happened was you imposed a demand on your body, and it perceived the demand in such a way that it had to respond by building muscle or getting stronger or, or doing whatever it needed to protect itself from the disturbances. Over time, your body got desensitized. So what can you do? You can increase the demand further, impose a further demand, and hopefully the body will respond in a positive way. And it will in a short period of time, though. The more you do, the faster it's going to adapt to it. So concentrated loading can be a very effective way for anybody that wants to uh, get stronger on a lift in a short period of time, get a muscle bigger in a short period of time, but it will only work for a short period of time. And it's one way to increase the demand without actually having to take time off because the, the other option if you get desensitized to your distributed loading training is to just take time off so that you resensitize to your training and get back to it and then you start to see uh, you know similar results that you did when you first started in the first place so that's not an option for most people concentrated loading is generally what most would uh, want to do so that way they can stay in the gym and hopefully see more progress in one area at the expense of everything else and the purpose is to do just that see progress in one area at the expense of everything else while everything else resensitizes so that when you go back to a more traditional distributed loading type of training uh, you get more results from your efforts. But there's a right way to increase the frequency, the intensity, and the volume, and there's a wrong way to do it. There's a lot of wrong ways to do it. Uh, one of the right ways I've kind of written out here for you. So there's a concentrated loading cycle for the bench press, and then there's a concentrated loading cycle to make the chest bigger. Why those two areas? Because those are the two areas that most men are infatuated with most. And, uh, you know, they'll kill people to learn how to do shit like this, to learn how to make those areas better, the bench press and the chest. So what I'm going to do, instead of just showing you the strategies and, and how they're written out, I'm going to explain the logic and rationale behind it. Because there's nothing worse than someone who goes into the gym and they're just following a program that's written down or that they copied off a video they saw on YouTube and they have no idea why the fuck they're doing it. I want you to understand the underlying reason as to why you're doing what you're doing. Because when you do, you have the free will to do it however you want. You don't need to use the exact exercises that are written in front of you. So uh, for the bench press to get stronger, you got to understand there are five neurological aspects that contribute to force production, that contribute to increasing your capacity to produce force. They are motor unit recruitment, rate coding, intermuscular coordination, intramuscular coordination, and inhibition. Your body has protective mechanisms built in to prevent you from hurting yourself. The bad thing about that is, obviously that sounds like a good thing, but the bad thing is that it will limit your ability to lift the most amount of weight possible because it will perceive the very heavy weights to be potentially harmful. So it'll put the brakes on you. And that's something you don't want if you want to maximize your ability to produce force. So the way the concentrated loading cycle is designed is to train all of these traits. On the first day, what you're doing is you want to impose the greatest demand possible by using an overload technique and, and using your strength reserve, your eccentric strength, using weights that you can lower, but you can't lift. Those are generally going to be seen as your potential concentric strength increase, because if you can't lower it, then you can't expect to lift it anytime soon. But you can lower more than you can lift. So you can use weights that exceed 90% of your max. And the purpose is to desensitize uh, the protective organisms like the GTO. Now, that's going to be a very demanding day. So the second day, the purpose is to facilitate recovery and get in some practice. Because this will help uh, you know, grease the groove, improve inter and intramuscular coordination the most by doing high volumes of work where you just try to work on technique using 75% of max roughly or something you could lift for 10. The third day, legs, back, biceps, basically the rest of the body. The purpose of this day is to just keep those muscles fresh, not to smash them and destroy them. 
What you want to do with a concentrated loading cycle is let everything else resensitize. So this could actually even be an off day, but most people don't want to take uh, you know time off for all their body parts. So you go and you do a squat, you do a row or a pull up, and you do a curl just to kind of keep everything else uh, you know where it was before you started the cycle. Day four, back to bench pressing. It's a contrast loading day where you're going to incorporate pause lifts and explosive lifts with an even lighter percentage of max than you used on the on the second day, uh, 55 to 65%, which will facilitate explosive movements and pause movements to be used to the best of your ability. And the purpose is to train the stretch reflex and to also avoid using the stretch reflex. The stretch reflex will contribute to producing force. So you're going to want to teach your body how to utilize it but at the same time, you don't want to over rely on it because if the stretch reflex is contributing too much, what's not contributing as much? The muscles. Sorry about the stupid fucking clock. I wasn't expecting that to go off. Day five is an off day. Day six, showcase and display strength day using roughly 90% of your max. So you went super heavy, lighter, lighter to facilitate recovery and then super heavy again. And the purpose is to just improve coordination further. Um, you know, you can have really big, strong muscles, but if you can't use them, what are they good for? If your goal is to increase your bench press, if you want to, you know, lift really heavy weights, then you got to practice lifting really heavy weights. So that fourth day of the week, that's the purpose there is to practice lifting heavy weights. You can't go heavy all the time, though. You overwork your body's capacity to recover. So that's why the strategy is designed the way it is. As for sets and reps, that's up to you. I would start with Prilipin's chart, scale it up or scale it down from there based on your recovery demands. So that's generally uh, you know, the best place to start. So it doesn't matter how many sets and reps you do. What matters is the quality work performed in each zone written out. So that's a concentrated loading cycle for the bench press. Concentrated loading cycle for the chest. The strategy here is to recruit and then fatigue. So I'll take you through the whole program and then I'll explain the rationale after. So day one is chest. Bench press, decline, incline, 3x4, 3x8, 4x6 to 8, 4x8 to 10, and then a wide grip movement, 3x12 to 15. Talk more about that in a second. Day 2, legs, let the chest recover. Day 3 and 7, off, let the chest recover. Day 4, primarily utilizing supersets. Uh, incline, 4x8 to 10. Incline dumbbell press to flat dumbbell press, superset, uh, 4x8 to 10. Pec deck to dips, 4x8 to 10. Decline press to decline fly, 4x8 to 10. Day five, let the chest rest, do back, and day six, back to chest again, this time using triceps to fatigue the chest even further. Bench press, four by six to eight. Incline, then flat, then decline flies, four sets of eight to 10, and then incline, then flat, then decline presses, four sets of eight to 10. So the strategy here, you might be wondering like, wow, that's just a bunch of fucking exercises written on a page. Day one is to recruit. Uh, the strategy is to recruit and then fatigue. Now you can't go heavy all the time, so what you do is you go heavier uh, at the beginning and then progressively lighter, but increasing the volume. And there's a reason why all these things are the way they are. Now for bench, incline, decline, doesn't matter if you do barbell press, dumbbell press, machine press, whatever works best for you. Uh, just follow the strategy. Wide grip, once again, you want to uh, place the muscles under load in their stretched position. So it doesn't matter if you're doing an incline, decline, or flat, barbell, dumbbell, or machine, that's up to you. Day four here, supersets. Now there's a there's a reason for the order. So if you notice, incline was third on the first day. It's first on this day because it was third. So it didn't get a chance to get hit with maximum intensity. Then you go on to supersets and the whole workout sequence goes from top to bottom, incline to flat, flat to decline. Once again, if you did things differently here, you could do them differently here. You could reverse it if you wanted to. This is just an example of a strategy. Now the first superset, incline dumbbell press to flat dumbbell press, that's called a mechanical drop set. The purpose is to go from a position of mechanical disadvantage or weakness, and as you fatigue, switch to a stronger position so that you can continue subjecting the muscles to high levels of tension uh, just at a different position. The second superset, pec deck and dips, that's a pre-exhaust superset. We want to pre-exhaust the chest. Does it have to be pec deck? Nope. Could be a cable fly, could be a dumbbell fly. Does it have to be dips? Nope. We're just going from a flat angle to a decline angle or something that mimics a decline angle. Could be a decline press, a decline dumbbell press, decline machine, whatever. Four sets of eight to 10. And then we're doing a pre-exhaust uh, or post-exhaust set where we go from a decline press to a decline fly. Once again, it could be a press with dumbbells, barbells, 
or a machine, and then the flag could be with dumbbells or cables or whatever. The last day tri sets is mechanical drop set and pre exhaust all in one. So we're going from incline to flat to decline with a fly to pre exhaust the chest in a, in a mechanical drop set fashion from a position of advantage to disadvantage, top to bottom. And then we repeat that sequence for the presses. So we uh, post exhaust or uh, pre exhaust the muscles and then fatigue them with compound movements because you're stronger on compound movements and can lift more weight. So you can subject the muscles to higher levels of time under tension, time under optimal or maximal tension. So those are just two strategies. That's all they are of concentrated loading. Because remember what Lou Holtz said, it's not the load that breaks you down, it's the way you carry it. This is how you can carry the load differently to increase the demand on certain areas while allowing the rest of the body to resensitize. And you can kind of make that your own. Just follow the same framework, the same strategy. Change up the body part, change up the exercises. If you understand the underlying reason to why you're doing something, which would be in this case, desensitize GTO, protective organisms, facilitate recovery, train the stretch reflex, uh, improve coordination, recruit and fatigue the chest on three separate days as often as possible and then give the body what it needs to recover. After about a four week time frame, you're gonna put yourself in a very good position to build muscle quickly, to get stronger quickly, and to not shoot yourself in the foot in the process. So, if you like the information, feel free to share it. Click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel, and I'll keep bringing it. Merry fucking Christmas. Get your chest bigger, get your bench up.